Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Jason Howell and I have been blown away by the reception of my last video on using Udio in collaboration with my own music to see if it could spawn some uh, inspiration for my work. So I wanna take it one step further. I've had this idea going through my head recently and you know, my initial workflow would be bring it into Ableton Live and start building it out and go from there. What I'm wondering is what if I put my money where my mouth is, what if I start it in Ableton Live and then feed that into Udio, Udio, I still don't know how to pronounce it, and come up with some, you know, generate some ideas, some different directions that I can go with it from the beginning there. And then I go in back into Ableton Live and I take some of those ideas and I recreate them. So that's what I'm gonna do today. If you like what I'm doing with you know, audio production and how it intersects and can, can relate to uh, what's happening in the world of artificial intelligence. Make sure and like the video down below, even subscribe while you're at it. I've got some really cool ideas coming up in the coming weeks and I don't want you to miss it. All right, so the plan starts with taking this idea that's in my head and starting to hash it out into Ableton Live. And I've got the idea for kind of the intro and the starting point of this song. So I'm gonna build it from scratch right now. All right, 120 BPM. I know that the song starts with kind of a plucky sound. Ooh, ooh, I like that one. Okay, let's start with that one. So maybe a reese sound at this point. Okay, something like that. Now let's go ahead and get the drum rack in there. My kicks, they layer nicely with a little bit of extra work. First kick being the kind of the low, uh, the low elements. The second kick being a little bit of the snap up top, which I definitely kind of trimmed down. Let's actually get a sequence going here. some pad types. I know the pluck has some uh, reverb to it, but I also want like a delay that's detached from this entire bus here. So maybe going into my delay bus as a send here. So let's go ahead and see. Okay, what about some snaps? Some nice snap. Now I want like a shake. All right, one last thing that I want to add here is is a bass of some sort. I know I've got the Reese in there, but I want like a bass to kind of cut through it a little bit. Still not sold on that sub bass. Okay, so I've just spent about an hour on this loop and I've exported the file to an MP3, but just to give you a sense of where I got to uh, in the last hour, this is roughly the idea that I've had bouncing around in my head for the most part. I ended up taking out the pad that I had in there. Um, I found that the pad was just kind of slowing it down in my mind, kind of weighing it down. I also wanted to give Udio plenty of room to work with. If I filled everything up with tons and tons of sounds, I feel like maybe I'm pigeonholing it 
to a certain degree. I could be wrong, but we're certainly going to find out. Okay, so let's hop on over to Udio and I'm going to go ahead and upload and we'll take the MP3 that I just created and upload that. It's going to ask me if I want to do that. Of course I do. Okay, so we've uploaded that. I want to crop and extend. I mean, the song, the clip that I bounced is pretty much a loop. It's like a 16 second loop. So I'm just going to extend that out. I'm adding a section after this because I want to come up with ideas that I can integrate into the song from here. Throw that on instrumental, ambient qualities. Yes, electronic, house, love the house. Go ahead and put some techno in there. Yeah, you know, we'll see from there. I'll go ahead and throw it in manual mode so it sticks pretty closely to my commands. Now down in advanced features, prompt strength. Let's throw that up to about 70. Context length. We'll do the whole thing essentially. High quality. Lyrics, not going to matter much. Let's go ahead and fire this off and see what happens. And I'm going to do another couple and another couple. So we're going to do six total generations. Now, again, the idea here isn't that I'm looking for Udio to finish my song for me. That's not how I want to use it. What I want is for Udio to come up with six different ideas, six different, six different directions that I could take this song if I wanted to. And if something really speaks to me, then I can go back into Ableton Live and I can start to kind of hash out my own version of what UDO put there. Hopefully it's not so far out of the realm of my capability that I can't do something with it. But I'm guessing that it can give me a sense of maybe like a top line melody that can go along with it or maybe a change in chord structure that I hadn't thought about before. I've given it a basis, a starting point. Where does it point me to next? That's what I really want to know. Okay, so we have the first of a few have uh, hit back here. Let's go ahead and see what it has in store for us, starting with this top one. You can tell the kind of diminished quality of the sound. Okay, so that one, <laughs> so that's kind of cool, but it goes, it go, ends up going down at that particular part. Like, I'm super curious if I open up Ableton Live, can I recreate that right now? It should be pretty easy. Okay, so I've, pl I've plotted this out. Now let's take a listen to what it actually sounds like given that change. Yeah, okay, I like that. Um, however, what I could also do is now I'm starting to get a little bit of a, an extension of the variation here. Duplicate all of these out. And then I go back to my original one and put it back to the beginning the way it was. Okay, now the whole thing ends up being... There we go. Okay, so now you know it gives it a little bit of a changing arc throughout the whole thing. Not every single 16 beats is exactly the same. It kind of has that change in dimension, which gives me some uh, possibilities with the melody down the line. Okay, so that's a useful change. All right, so let's head back over to Udio and see what the next example gives me. A little more staccato on the pluck. Ooh, I like that. Okay. 
Okay. Boo, doo, 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 doo. Okay. So let's head back over into Ableton Live. This sounds like <laughs> this is really interesting. Uh, it really, it really is. Like, like check it out. This is the collaborative thing that I'm talking about. This is okay. Give me some ideas. Now I can insert them in and I could test them. And really what I'm doing is I'm building up the foundational layers for an entire song. You know, I'm squishing them into the first 16 beats, of course, but often with electronic music, at least in my process, and I know a lot of other people, this is how you start a song. You build up your max loop and then you pare it down. And in order to do that, you need a lot of options. And this is a great way of getting options. So I actually kind of like this a lot. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna analyze that a little bit more and try and replicate it. All right, so that, uh, that's totally adding to it already. Getting some really cool ideas. Let's jump over and see what the third thing is that it gave me. <laughs> this is really cool. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> I don't know that I have the capability of replicating that last part, at least not right now. Um, but there is that top line melody, um, the harmony. Okay, and that's actually pretty easy if I think about it. Let's see here. So let's just duplicate this into its own separate pluck. Uh, top line pluck. Okay, and here we go. This is really easy to throw together. Oh man, already this song is like totally starting to fill out. I love this. This is so great. Okay. Uh, so those were the first three. What? Oh man, I just can't wait to hear what the fourth idea is. Let's uh, Let's check it out. Getting more aggressive. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 right there at the very end. What was that? Okay, so that's just a, a kind of a washy, like, uh, hi hat loop of some sort. Okay, so what if it's just this? Whew. Okay, so I've now added a kind of pick-me-up shaker loop uh, inspired on that last clip, and this is what it sounds like. Yeah, it really does pick it up. You know, you take it out, you really hear it. In. Okay, yes, I'm digging it. I love where this is headed. Okay, so we've now gone through four of the six options. Two, three, four. We are on Echoes of Silence at this point. Let's see <laughs> what it comes up with. Really wants to do staccato on that thing. The trick here is replicating that. It's a little confusing for my ears, but I think I can get it. 
Okay, it took me a little while. I didn't get it quite the same. I could probably go back and tweak it a little bit later, but I wanna keep this moving. But in the meantime, this is where I got to. That's really sweet. Um, it's a little loud in the mix, so I'll definitely bring that down, but um, that's cool. I'm digging it. All right, we have <laughs> we have one more thing to check out here. So let's see here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Echoing Horizons appears to be the very last idea that we're gonna test out here. Let's check it out. simple. Nope. One more synth line. It's getting a little heavy on the synth line, but um, I'm going to go ahead and just do this so I can say I did it. Oh, okay. So I put in the last layer just as an extra. I'm not entirely sold on it. I mean, it does add something. The problem is we're getting so full of like synth lines and synth ideas that uh, all of it together is just sounding a little like, well, actually like a lot too much. But that's kind of the beauty here is we can build all that up. And then later we can trim it down or we can take one of these synth lines and have them come in in two minutes or you know somewhere down the line when it makes sense and kind of swap them in and out. You're adding variety and it's all very harmonic, harmonically driven variety that's, that's written around this that I didn't necessarily come up with entirely. It's the collaboration with Udio. So with all those elements in play, it basically sounds like this and you know keep in mind some of these things can come in and go out over time that's the last uh, element that i had added sounded a little too dry for my taste but Wow, that's really come a long way. And then when you compare it against what we started with, which was this. Wow, okay. That's what I'm talking about. This is what it means when you're collaborating with an AI, with the machine. In my opinion, this is how I would choose to use AI. Um, definitely check out my other UDO video, one of my other videos, because I'm going to be doing a lot more of this stuff. Um, if you want to kind of see what it's like to run different ideas through UDO, this I really just focused on a single idea. And, you know, leave a comment down below. Let me know the ways that you are using UDO right now as a music producer. Like, how is it infiltrating your songwriting experience? Or is it? Do you not like what it comes up with and you don't touch it with a 10 foot pole? Or do you see it as more of a collaborative partner? Not necessarily giving you things that you need to use, but things that you can use and you can explore. Does it light that creative fire? That's what really excites me. And speaking of lighting your creative fire, if I have done that, please give me a like on this video. Uh, you can also subscribe to the channel. I've got more of this stuff coming up and I'm just super thrilled to be able to do this along with you. Thank you for uh, checking out this experiment with Udio as I collaborated with the machine. I'm Jason Howell. I'll see you next time.